So mate, we're gonna get we're gonna give people a bit of an insight into the interesting life of a pro Scottish rugby player. Only two clubs in Scotland. You're one of the lucky players that gets to represent them pretty much at this point every week. So we're just gonna look through the start of your life. So we're gonna start right back at the beginning. Obviously, like I said, me and you first met ten years ago. Peebles versus Melrose, under sixteens, the derby of all derbies. Every club in the borders wants to tell Peebles they're not part of the borders. Every club people's plays they spend trying to tell them they are part of the borders how is it like playing for melrose from such a young age what's it like when you walk into melrose and you see all the names on the walls and you see the names you've got coaching you yeah it, it is huge to be fair i mean i i started out there when i was six years old um i remember getting a photograph with uh, my brother and kelly brown uh, doing a summer camp out in the green yards and i think that was that was when I started to enjoy rugby. I, I watched Kelly Brown when I, obviously when I was really young. So, and then being able to get a photo with him uh, was pretty big back then. So, uh, still, still, still got the photo actually. Mum's got it somewhere on the wall. I don't, I don't know, but, um, but no, starting there from such a young age, and then coming through the age groups, as you say, playing, playing the likes of Peebles and the all the other border clubs. Um, like there, there wasn't really a, a a game that you play in the borders that was an easy match. That you know it was, they were all kind of relatively big derbies. So, um, mm. and then playing under 18s, getting coached by Jim Telfer, uh, that was <laughs> that was a highlight as well. I was going to so, say the 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 what's it like when you're playing under 16s, under 18s. And obviously, when I was brought to school, you know, there's always the, oh, guys, it's about having fun. It's going like that. But you can tell when you've got an ex-British and Irish line with the most famous motivational speech of all time. But do you hear it in his voice and stuff like that? It's like, right, guys, it's about having fun. But we're Melrose, so we have a lot more fun when we win as Melrose. Because <laughs> I don't think I, I, I don't, don't think I've ever played. I don't think I've ever seen or heard or played in a game where there's not been the like you were always you guys were always the team to beat as melrose is what i'm trying to say like is did you have that reputation from your side as well you're like we are the perceived best whether we are or not we are uh, we have that reputation we, well going back to jim telfer mm -hmm. like I, I never heard him say uh we're going out there to have fun like, <laughs> that was <laughs> never his motive he would always want the W, uh, no matter uh, who. Once, once you finish, once you finish a little story, I'll tell you about. It. It's the best trash talk I've ever received was from Jim Telfer, and I was fifteen years old. I'll tell you. About <laughs> uh, but I think we were always quite, quite confident, quietly confident going into games. Um, we would never think like we're the, we're the team to beat, or maybe there was a wee bit more pressure on us because we we were kind of maybe as you say expected to win, but. Uh, you know, we we did have a good good squad, and uh, quite a few of the boys went on to play first team Melrose, uh, now playing Southern Knights, and and then a few boys went on to play pro as well. So we we had a good under 18s team, under 16s team as well. So got coached by uh, good coaches, which helped, um, and it helped draw in other players from other towns in the borders. Um, so obviously that would that would hinder other towns, but obviously help us. So um, we <laughs> we, we, we didn't really. If you want to be the best, you play with the best players. I don't I don't resent anybody for wanting to play for Melrose. I mean, the yeah, rest no, of people's the, the people's will like me when this airs when I say that, but I I don't blame anybody for wanting to play for Melrose. I'll yeah, be staying no, inside think, for yeah. a few weeks. But... <laughs> Yeah, we you often got the odd person from Hoyker Gala saying, "No, I'll, I'll never, never play for Melrose." But <laughs> well, you can understand it's a massive rival, um, and I, I think I, I managed to turn one people's player uh, to come play for Melrose, and that was Craig Pringle. <laughs> so he I was. was <laughs> I wasn't going to say his name in case he's on it, but yeah, no. Shout out to Craig, <laughs> Craig, if you're listening, and hope you're well, mate. Nice to. If we were we were jealous you left. That's the we were we were anger in we were angry in pure jealousy that you left. Mate, so, nah, yeah, we were going, pretty happy to be fair. <laughs> but mate, yeah, going back, Jim Telfer, the best the best trash talk I've ever received in rugby because I was always I was never quick enough or fast enough. So I was, I'll beat you with words and I'll try to get you soon. Then was my approach. 
And I remember I was 15 years old and I got a brand new pair of boots. And you know when you're classic young, you never break your boots and you just go, oh, I'll be fine, I'll chuck them on. And I remember yeah. it, was, it, got, it got to like half time and I was like, my feet are killing me, like they're, they're torn up, they're blisters. So I chucked my old boots back on that were like, they were like sodden through, boots were going out. And I walked out and Jim Telford just looked me up and just went, lads, we're going to be absolutely fine. They can't afford rugby boots. And I was like, well, I'll be that. <laughs> Uh, I've never been so mentally defeated by one sentence in my life. But. No, no, especially when you're buzzing about your new boots and Jim <laughs> Telford just shuts you down instantly. Uh, just looks me up and down and goes, I lads will be completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he is, he is brutal, to be fair. He's, uh, I remember we were training on the back pitches at Melrose, um, just opposite the green yards uh, mm -hmm. over the road. Um, and we had we had Jim one of the first sessions, uh, and he was on a crutch for some reason. Um, I think he took a fall, uh, but we were doing uh, rock clearing and body height, mm -hmm. and he was standing there holding his crutch um, horizontally. So you you'd have <laughs> to get low enough to get under his crutch, and if you skiffed his crutch or whatever, you'd, <laughs> you'd hit him in the back with his crutch. So. <laughs> It was oh. it was an old old school way of teaching you, but I mean, it it definitely worked. I was about to say because as you as you alluded to there, like the the standard and quality that comes out of Melbourne. Because I thought we just faced an unlucky year, like obviously when we played you. Because like you said, it was you, Craig. When it got to the age groups, your brother managed to get in that sort of bracket, and he came down. And then yeah. I remember I was thinking, I was like, man, we're just unlucky. They just it's one of those teams where just everything aligns and every player's in the same year group. And then I remember going to watch my brothers play. My brothers were both younger than me. And obviously they had people in the year like Kieran Clark and people like that. And I was just thinking, yeah. like, no, it's, it's just Melrose. It's just the way it just goes. Melrose. Yeah, it's just Melrose. Yeah, it's just like, you could just get a hashtag. I'll, I'll send it to them. Just get a hashtag. It's like, just Melrose things. That's what it is. It's just Melrose <laughs> things. Yeah. But also, like, what's it like? Do you do you get a chance to go back a lot? Obviously, you were you were playing for them still quite recently. But like, do you get a chance to go watch the youngers? Like, do they ask you to come along and like help out with the youngers when you can? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's um, obviously with COVID coming in, uh, mm -hmm. the last couple of years I've I've been quite busy with Edinburgh, but then before that uh, I was still involved with Melrose, so I was still playing for them and um, competing in the Premiership. Uh, and obviously that changed to the Super 6, um, but I mean, it, it's it's something that more ex Melrose players need to do, I think, is get down to the summer camps, and um, it's it's not been not been requested that much uh, mm -hmm. from Melrose, but I think if just knowing from playing there when I was really young, doing those summer camps, um, I remember Scott, the likes of Scott White, mm -hmm. uh, and Cal Anderson, they were both big, playing great rugby. Carl Anderson's <laughs> people don't have any of this Melrose nonsense. <laughs> Carl uh, Anderson's you, you just, Yeah, I know. But you, you look at these names at um, the summer camps and you you look up to them and you're like, wow, that, mm -hmm. like you see them do so well for Melrose and and obviously do well for people's now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, if he does, it's it's, it's good to see those faces there. <laughs> but it's like it's like you said, like you still you still remember a photo of when you were six with Kelly Brown, so but like Melrose, it brings us players back. Like Kelly's a great example. Obviously, brought Saracens up for the sevens and things like that. Like you, you look after your own really well. Like you, you. The way I describe Mel, I don't know if you see this from. So when, because obviously, so I'm not from the borders. Like I'm not. I was moved. I like moved up here when I was young. So I'm ra I'm raised borders, but I'm not from the borders. And yeah. it was always a case of like, it was kind of like Melrose versus everyone else. If that's the sense, it was like as long as we beat Melrose, it doesn't matter. We could lose every other game in the season, but we beat Melrose. So like it's like you've kind of you what you did really well as a team was you made it so like we're Melrose and we're sticking as Melrose and it's like you can go somewhere else but you'll always be Melrose and I think that's something like there's a lot to say for that like as a club in the modern day game of we look after our own still yeah no I think so and you kind of got hints of that you you wouldn't really think about that when you're playing there um, mm -hmm. but you kind of got hints of it um, I mean. It was just such a tight knit of players. Um, it was it was very hard to, you know, when when money got offered from prem sides every month, um, 
you know, you, you wouldn't really, you'd want to stay at Melrose. You you wouldn't worry about the money. Um, you know, you'd have a, a semi-decent season, um, especially looking at the, the players you were getting or had that mm-hmm. season. So, uh, yeah, as you say, they, they do. If, if anyone from Melrose has played at Melrose or brought up in Melrose gets asked about their, their rugby career, I think Melrose would always... Be mentioned, which is they've mm-hmm. somehow they've done that well, um, and obviously Homer Sevens. It's as you as you say, it's uh, it brings brings decent pro teams to to the Sevens day, and it, it makes it a good day. Right, that's a good little segue. So we'll go on to that. What's it like representing Melrose in the Melrose Sevens? Uh, like representing Melrose. Uh, again, it was something I always wanted to do uh, before that. I would be selling programs before, like during the sevens, when I was under 16s, under 18s, uh, and then managing to watch maybe the the lead up games to the quarterfinal, semifinals, and just like seeing the crowd, they're there to watch rugby and and drink pints and just enjoy a really good day. And then when I'm when I managed to represent Mowers. Uh, at, at their own sevens, it was it was ridiculous. Like you'll get no better atmosphere at a club ground. I think there's twelve, fourteen thousand there sometimes. Um, it's crazy seeing it on TV. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, and just playing playing in front of them is yeah, it, it's surreal to be honest. It, it's it's a really great experience. 